Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will talk about how we can create a 2D dynamic array. Okay. So we have seen how 1D dynamic array is created. Now we want to create a 2D array. Uh, that's like a grid-like structure, like this. And the problem here is uh, we don't have any direct way of creating and initializing a 2D dynamic array like we have for a static array. Okay. So if you want to create a very simple 2D array, you simply do int array followed by the number of rows and followed by the number of columns but this kind of a initialization you cannot do for a dynamic array so what is going to happen is we have to allocate memory row by row okay so we have to do work for each row so first we will allocate uh, this row and we will store the address maybe let's say this address is 100 then we will allocate this address this row and maybe let's say this address is 800 and it is not necessary that they follow the same order then we will allocate the next row and maybe let's say this uh, address is 600 and maybe then we allocate this one and let's say this address is for uh, 1400 the so idea is we will iterate over all the rows and we will allocate these rows one by one okay so one by one we are going to allocate rows and each row is a 1d array okay so we are going to combine multiple 1d arrays to form a 2d array and now you may ask uh, what about these addresses where we are going to store these addresses so we, we will need another array okay and we will store the address of this array and now let me talk about data types maybe you are storing integers here 1 2 3 4 5 so each of these box is going to be integer and suppose now you want to store the address of this row or so this is going to going to be of the type int star this is going to be an array of pointers so this row or this this is a special array this is going to be an array of pointers and we we also need to store the address of this particular array okay so we actually will make something like int star star followed by name of the array so we have a pointer variable that stores the address of this array and this array stores the address of each row so this is how we are going to allocate a 2d dynamic array now this may sound confusing so let us create a function that creates this array and returns the address of this particular array okay so now let me show it to you so i'll say int star star let's say create 2d array let's say this is a function this accepts the number of rows and the number of columns and since it is a dynamic array we can return the array from this method it will not get destroyed even if we create this array inside of a particular function so now first i will create this variable int star star array and i will initialize it with with the array of uh, int star okay and this would be the size would be equal to the number of rows okay so what we did we first created this part we first created this array and in this array each element is of the type int star and this starting address is of the type of int star star okay so i hope this this is clear and now we are going to iterate over each row okay so let, let me let me show it to you what we are trying to do so first we created a bucket that can store the address of an array of that can store the address of an array of pointers okay so we have array of pointers okay so this is an array of int stars this each bucket is of the type int star okay so we have row number of elements in this now we are going to iterate over this array and we are going to say okay you go over each row and allocate a new array like this so let me let me show it to you for int i equals to 0 i less than the number of rows i plus plus and i can say array of i okay 
so that means we are talking about this box let's say this is the ith box so this is array of i this should point to a new array which has column number of columns so array of i should be equal to new int and each box is of the type int that's it so this is how we allocate memory for each row okay and maybe we also want to initialize this array with some value okay when let's say increasing list of numbers so maybe i can say value equals 0 and then i can iterate over this array for int i equals to 0 i less than the number of rows i plus plus and for int j equal to 0 j less than the number of columns j plus plus so creation part is done till now okay so creation part is this much only and now we are just putting some values here so we are saying array of i and j this is going to be equal to value and i do value plus plus and from here i can return this array so i'm i've done this written this method why because i want to tell you even if you uh, even if this function call is over since this array is dynamically allocated you can still access these values inside the main method okay so let us take input the number of rows and columns from the user int rows columns scene rows columns and let's create a variable int star star arr that makes this function call create 2d array i give rows and columns here and then i can iterate and print all the elements of this array for int i equal to 0 i less than the number of rows i plus plus for int j equal to 0 j less than the number of columns j plus plus i can just see out array of i and j followed by space and followed by new line here okay. so let's build this code and let's try to run it maybe four rows three columns so i have four rows three columns and i can see this array okay maybe seven rows and six columns so this is how the array looks like okay so i hope this initialization is clear so one important thing that we learned from this lecture is that if it was a static array then you cannot access the content in main but it's a dynamic array that means it is not the memory is outside the scope of the call stack okay so we called main that had a variable known as arr it called another method that was create 2d array so this method created a variable arr which pointed to to a 2d array and this slide in the heap memory so once this function call is over this arr is gone but let's say this address was 100 which was stored in arr and this 100 was returned to the main so now main is able to point to this memory and this connection is gone okay and we are able to print the elements of this memory from the main and we are able to do it because it is a dynamic memory okay. so i hope now the concepts of dynamic memory allocation are crystal clear to you and that's all for this module thank you bye bye